And Barbara Lee joined a handful of Democratic lawmakers who toured a migrant holding facility at the border. And the Congresswoman joining me right now to talk about what she saw. Uh, Barbara Lee, good to see you. Good to see you, Frederica. Thank so, you for having me. Great. So, so Congresswoman, I'm wondering, before I ask you about your impressions of, of what you saw, just listening to what Jen Psaki was saying there with, you know, three facilities uh, housing 7,000 uh, children, do you believe that's a temporary fix? Is that enough? It's got to be a temporary fix uh, because, first of all, the, uh, the narrative has to change as it relates to uh, immigration and migration. Uh, the people are looking for a better life. Uh, the root causes, of course, are corruption, violence, instability in the Northern Triangle countries. And so I'm, I'm very pleased that the Biden administration is focusing on that, which is the long-term solution. Uh, I have the privilege to chair the subcommittee on appropriations of uh, state and foreign operations, which really looks at the funding and how we prioritize funding to address the root causes and the underlying causes for this. No one wants to leave their home. These mm -hmm. children uh, would rather be home. They, the parents would rather be home. So we've got to see this uh, as a long-term problem that we that has been a long-term problem that we must now fix. So you're encouraged that the vice president, this will be one of her, you know, focus, which will be uh, how to stem the flow of, of migration, what to do, uh, what to offer before migrants make it to the southern border. Uh, how hopeful about that are you? Well, it's going to be hard. Because it's going to take <laughs> the cooperation is, uh, the, the, of those countries. Yes, it is. And that's what we have to do. We have to start mm -hmm. working with these countries to address corruption, violence, instability, poverty. And we have to work together to make sure that uh, we prioritize our tax dollars to do just that. But let me say, we have to have also the short-term solutions. I visited with uh, Congressman Joaquin uh, Castro, the the Refugee Resettlement uh, Center in uh, Carrizo Springs, right outside of San Antonio. And let me tell you, uh, they gave us many suggestions in terms of how to make sure that these young people uh, are processed more quickly so that they can get to their parents or their sponsors or whomever will be responsible for them. I also visited with Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, uh, the border and the facilities in El Paso, Texas, which of course I'm proud to say is where I was born in an immigrant community. And let me tell you, the uh, Border Patrol there, uh, the Border Patrol, the Customs and Border Patrol are not prepared to take care of children. We have to make sure we have more uh, nonprofits and more uh, places and an expedited process for these children to get to places where they're not held in confinement because these, the Border Patrol needs to do their job and that is patrolling the border. And so we have to uh, see this differently. We have to provide uh, social workers and medical staff and more uh, individuals who can really help process these children. First of all, they need to be embedded now in the Customs and Border Patrol facilities until we move them out. But also we need to expand the number of sponsors and expedite the process mm -hmm. for children to be able to get so out. So then tell me of your impressions from the recent tour that you uh, had uh, where many of these unaccompanied minors are um, you know, finding refuge, at least temporarily. And, and were you, did you see the same kind of, of scenes that uh, was provided in video from uh, Senator Langford? I mean, are you looking at the same thing, overcrowded facilities, uh, children under Myler blankets? What did you see? Absolutely, I saw that in El Paso, and that's why I'm saying the Customs and Border Control, they need to do their job in terms of patrol of the border. We need to have more resettlement uh, centers. We have to have sponsors who uh, who can take these children quick more quickly and process them we have to have the parents and family members ready to accept the children and go through the case management that's required i visited mccallum texas when the trump administration was separating children from their families i visited homestead it was a total disaster it was awful the the pain and suffering and trauma we still have a long way to go and so the the uh, customs and border patrol facilities are to hold people, hold adults. Uh, they're not prepared to take care of children. So we've got to reprioritize. Are the conditions that are different or the same than what you saw during the Trump administration? Well, let me tell you, uh, the refuge, Office of Refugee Settlement in Carrizo Springs, for example, is a lot different. Uh, the staff there is run by a nonprofit and they're trying to make sure that these children at least have six hours a day school that they have three meals a day, that they're processed more quickly. They need a lot of help though. They need okay. more staff. 
and they need a system that allows the transfer of these these children more quickly. All right, let me shift gears. If I could ask you about the you know the battle over voting rights, Georgia passing this new voter restriction uh, bill, critics saying it unfairly targets black voters, Democrats, and this all comes at a time when the Biden administration does have its hands full with uh, several situations, pandemic, this you know crisis at at the border, um, the administration promising to launch. Uh, a, a, a real effort for correcting infrastructure, addressing infrastructure. Uh, this is what Senator Warnock uh, said the administration can do uh, simultaneous to um, embarking on infrastructure. Let's talk about uh, some of the, the potential solutions for what you're talking about. President Biden, of course, called efforts to restrict voting in your state of Georgia and elsewhere an atrocity. He said it was Jim Crow in the 21st century. But he also said the next big initiative is still going to be infrastructure. So should the president prioritize federal voting rights and legislation to do that over infrastructure or anything else? Oh, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We've got to work on the infrastructure of our country, our roads and our bridges, and we've got to work on the infrastructure of our democracy. So how concerned are you, uh, you know, that the only way in which to really address the Georgia new law is to try to get um, voter protections legislation passed uh, on the Hill? We absolutely must do that. We have to have federal protections. When you see what is taking place throughout the country, uh, and now, uh, especially in Georgia, we have got to uh, protect our democracy and protect the right to vote. Uh, this is a defining moment for our democracy and, democracy, and we have to do everything at once. There are many challenges, and so Reverend Warnock is absolutely correct. Uh, we have to seize this moment and pass H.R. 1, which protects access to the ballot. We have to protect uh, voting rights and pass H.R. 4, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And so we have to do these things and we have to pass these bills immediately because we see all around the country where the right to vote is being taken away, the constitutional right to but vote. But in order to do that, you need Republican support. Well, we have to, and I personally believe we should get rid of the filibuster. We have to do something as it relates to the filibuster so it can get through the Senate. But I think the president and uh, the Senate, they're working together to try to figure out ways to make sure that we get these passed. But this is an emergency on all fronts in this country. We have a pandemic. We have to pass an infrastructure bill. We must make sure that our democracy is protected. People elect us to do the hard jobs. And so I think that we're going to get there, but it's going to take a heck of a lot of work and a heavy lift. But uh, we can't afford to go back to the days of Jim Crow and beyond past that. I mean, do the disabled deserve the right to vote, senior citizens. Uh, our young people. This, these voter suppression laws are affecting, yes, African Americans, but so many, many people in our country. And it's right. time to stop the voter suppression. And you are indeed in the midst of a, a big, heavy, important job. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Nice being with you. Thank you.